Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. I have the honor this month of doing both the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. So if let me first start part just part of the prayer. One, we just had Memorial Day. And I want to thank all of the veterans and officers and, and everyone that has served and or is serving currently. Secondly, we just had D-Day. Um, I was really, really disappointed in the lack of coverage that we had in this country on such a monumental day. Um, we are where we are today because of those, as the many, many times repeated phrase, some gave, uh, gave some, some gave all and we appreciate each and every one. My wife's father was one of those that was in World War II. He had a B-24 uh, 20, uh, 24 shot down from under him uh, over occupied France, and then a B-17 shot out from under him in occupied Germany. Made it back both times, was not captured. Uh, people like that made our country. <coughs> Just wanted to start out with that. If we can all bow our heads, please. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for so many gifts that you have given to all of us in such a wonderful county that we live in and are privileged to be a part of. We pray that you bring us all together in order that we might live together, share all these benefits that we have. We pray that you will help us as commissioners to see and, and seek the truth and to be wise enough to make wise and decisions that you would approve of. We pay all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. What a privilege to be able to say that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Vines, you are the only speaker I think that we have that's uh, speaking toward the agenda, so we'll recognize you first. Thank you, Commissioners. My name is Henry Vines. I live 3450 Isley Drive, Snow Camp. And uh, John, I'd just like to iterate what you said about veterans. Uh, my grandpa lost his life uh, in World War II and is buried in France. And uh, my daddy was only 12 years old when he when he got killed so we we never knew him but uh, I thank him for this honor to be here and be able to speak um, I have just a simple request this on this on the agenda and that is uh, on the public hearing uh, I would just like to ask for y'all if y'all could do y'all's discussions and um, before asking the public to comment on the proposed budget uh, or even after y'all decide which kind of budget you want to adopt. Uh, I know that the proposed budget by the county manager 
Uh, and I spoke with each one of y'all, and I know that it's probably not going to be what's what's been presented. And I would just uh, like to ask y'all if y'all would consider either discussing it first or giving us a second chance uh, to uh, comment on the budget. And that's all, and thank you for this time. Thank you. Madam Clerk, I don't think we have any other speakers on the agenda. Is that correct? We do not have any uh, speakers on agenda-related items at this time, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. The only response I would have is my namesake, my grandfather's uh, brother, was killed in World War One. was the first commissioned officer killed in World War I, and his body it was buried, of course, in France. Uh, his tombstone is at Bethel Presbyterian Church in McLeansville. So uh, a lot of people gave. Any other comments? Okay. Do we have a motion about the uh, agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Any comments? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Being motion unanimous. To consent agenda. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous with both votes. We have a motion to open the public hearing. So move. Second. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, aye. unanimous. Okay, we are now in the public hearing segment. Um, and not knowing and not asking those to sign up for the public uh, for the public hearing, uh, I'll start on this side. Anybody on this side that you just raise your hand if you would like to speak? Yes, sir. You've been the only one on this side. Please come forward. <laughs> okay, we need to announce uh, for this segment, unlike the other segments, the other segments you have three minutes. For the budget hearing, you have a total of five minutes. Um, and Madam Clerk, are you, are you or Ms. Bruce? I think I was checking the overflow, Mr. Chairman, to see if uh, there were folks over there, so. All right. Mr. Walker, I assume you're doing a clock. Yes. We will gong you after five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With a hook. <laughs> Please go. Okay. Uh, my name is Henry Vines, and uh, I live at 3450 Hours of Drive in Snow Camp. Uh, commissioners, I would just like to say that, uh, first of all, it seems to be that uh, we're in pretty good shape here in the county. Uh, we've found $17,071,436 of extra revenue uh, that uh, we can increase our budget by. I realize that two million of that revenue is coming from our fund balance. It would seem to think that with this kind of increase in revenues that we should have a um, surplus of money from the current year. Uh, instead of being over budget, we should be under budget. When you are saying that we can increase our spending by this much money with no increase in taxes, property taxes, it would seem to me that uh, we ought to be able to save some of this money in a way of, you know, property tax decrease instead of trying to figure out a way to spend this money. And not taking from, from Miss Thompson, in, but you know, it's this money is raining down. You know, um, I have looked over the budget, and there's a lot of things I don't quite understand. Uh, one thing is that uh, the request of in many light items uh, 
is less than what is recommended. Uh, if a department is asking for a certain um, amount of money, why is it increased in the proposed budget? Also, uh, we enacted an eight cent property tax increase two years ago. This eight cent property tax was supposed to help save taxpayers money. And, but what it's done in essence is created a fund that's, going, that's leading to more spending. We have 24 odd million dollars that we've collected over two years. And from my understanding, I don't think that we spent that money. Uh, it's just laying over an account and it was supposed to be going toward a uh, reduction of the bond and the bond debt. And we issued the bonds for the exact amounts that was projected to cover you know, the proposed bonds that were approved. And I just don't quite understand that, you know, is if, if we have got a reduction uh, in our money, in our debt, then why are we going to keep collecting that eight cent? And we uh, saved money on our bonds because we had projected a 4%, I think, interest rate. And uh, we got like a, was it 1.4 or 1.6% uh, rate. So there's another savings. Also, we put projected in a $1.2 million for cost. It only cost us 500. So that's another 500,000. It just seems like we have more money coming in and um, instead of trying to save this money, uh, we're trying to figure out a way to spend the money. So I just uh, would like you know you to look at this and, and uh, when we look at uh, all the other money that's coming to this county through the COVID, 33 million coming to the county, possibly a hundred million dollars to the school system. It would seem that uh, this might could offset a lot of cost for the counties. And um, commissioners, I know you have a, a tough job ahead of you. And my final comment, I would just like to say that uh, I know that there's raises that are being proposed. I don't think that the raises are what we need to be doing. We've done a study uh, three years ago about adjusting salaries. We've never done that. The sheriff has made numerous presentations that we need adjustments in salary. It looks like that we've got this extra here. It looks like we get these adjustments made and then we worry about giving some raises. Um, and I read in the paper where we got people coming to the sheriff's department taking a cut. So everything must not be as rosy on the other side of the fence as they always say. And I'll close my time's up. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Well, we thank, thank you. you. No other speakers on this side of the room, is that correct? This side. If you want to speak, please raise your hand. All right. Um, there being two, I'll just start on the ladies first. So <laughs> there were several down There's here. Three. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You're good. Thank you. My name is Beth Kennett. I live in Burlington. And thank you for hearing me this evening. This evening, I want to speak to you concerning the budget for the Alamance Burlington School System. And I ask that you fully fund the Alamance Burlington School System budget as requested. Although, if there's an extra 17 million, you could throw in some more. I am very concerned about the state of education in our county. Without fully funding Alamance Burlington School System, we cannot address the challenges that are present. We have all seen how critical public schools are over the last year, especially as we have lived through and, and continuing to live through a global pandemic. 
In order for Alamance Burlington School System to have all of its tools and resources to support students after COVID-19, we need to grant full funding to the request made by our superintendent for this year's budget. In Alamance County, we need to value robust education that is preparing students to engage in the world, in life, with open minds and curiosity to learn and grow, with appreciation for cultural differences in our community and around the world. In Alamance County, we need to value our educators who give of themselves above and beyond the everyday requirements and expectations to create engaging and interesting learning environments for the children in our community. We need to support those educators and provide opportunities for educators to continue to grow and learn so they can better address the needs in our county. We need to show respect for our educators to whom we entrust the care and education of the children in this county. In Alamance County, we need to value the community leaders who have been elected to represent our community and serve as members of our school board. We must listen to and hear with respect the different the differing perspectives and we must stand against disrespect and bullying of any kind toward any person. We must learn to work together for the improvement and development of our community. As a community member in Alamance County, I am committed to contribute my time and energy to work to build an atmosphere of healthy community with respect, care, and interest in others who live here. As our county commissioners, I am asking that you join me in creating a healthy culture of respect for education, including a willingness to value the education system that we have and to support it to be more diverse, inclusive, and equitable for all students, educators, and employees. The education system in our community is one of the foundations that supports, the, in any community, is one of the foundations that supports the health and well-being of the community. Fully funding the Alamance Burlington School System's budget request is a step to creating an engaged and supportive community. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Are you a teacher? I am not. Well, not in the public school system and with adults. That's the heart of one, I can tell. <laughs> well, I'll just go down the road, guys, as we... Hey, Seneca. How you doing? All right. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm Seneca Rogers, a resident here in Graham, North Carolina. Thank you for the opportunity to address this body concerning the latest ABSS budget proposal. My request tonight is that as county commissioners, you fully fund our schools here locally for the upcoming year. As a citizen of Alamance County, a former ABSS graduate, and also a former school board member, I mean school board candidate, sorry, Education is an ongoing personal concern of mine. Our education system should always remain a top priority nationally and locally. While many were saying that our schools were closed over the past academic year, I stand here now to say our schools were never closed. Our schools simply just looked different. Teachers and students adapted constantly to the ever-changing directives of our school system. As, as with the students and educators, I too had to transition myself from going into an actual office desk to creating a workspace at home. And yet during this pandemic, the flaws and failings of our school district and problems that came about that were hitting came into full view. Problems with equity in hiring and in funding. In Alamance County, we need to grow an education system that prepares our students to be true world citizens with a real appreciation for the cultural differences in our community through learning and understanding what makes a community, a neighborhood, and a school system unique and poised to thrive. We must invest in the professional development of our educators and administrators so they can know that we value them. Every day our educators ensure that our students receive the best learning regardless of the environment as possible. These educators love our schools and students. We can show them that same love and appreciation for their efforts by making sure that the funding and resources are available to continue working at such a high level. Alamance County grows daily. New housing development pop up every day along our major highways. 
We have new businesses like UPS that will soon arrive in our community. And as a result, new families and their children will come to our county and expect to receive a quality public education. We need to let it be known that we wholeheartedly support our school system, not just with our words, but also with our money and funding. In every election cycle, we hear candidates stand up and say, I'm a huge supporter of our local public schools. I'm a product of our public schools. Yet, when some get elected, they fail to follow through with that huge support. A good friend of mine always says, show me your budget and I'll show you where your priorities lie. So with this budget, you county commissioners have the opportunity to prove that Alamance County's priorities are in line with a robust educational system that strives for a culture of continual improvement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Um, Medora Burke School, do I have to give my address? Name and address, oh. yes. Medora Burke School, 3673 Mevin Rogers Road. Um, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to speak for you again tonight. Um, tonight I'm speaking on behalf of the Alamance Burlington Association of Educators. Uh, we'd like to thank City Manager Haygood for his recommendation to fully fund the ABSS budget this year. Um, as you guys know, as we fully reopen our school buildings next year, we're going to have one heck of a job to do uh, to get some of our most vulnerable students closer to grade level proficiency. Uh, this year has been really hard on our kids and really hard on our educators to have to reinvent the way that we do our jobs. Um, this budget process, though, has been a bright point for a lot of us. It feels really different than it has in years past. I didn't have to marshal an army of red shirts and fill up an auditorium. Um, it, I've been hearing from educators around the county that they're filled with hope uh, with the sale of the bonds and the infrastructure improvements that have already started. Today they were tearing out the old and horrific bathrooms at Eastern. Um, that I know there's a lot of hope and uh, a lot of us see these school improvements um, as, as a symbol of your commitment to Alamance County Schools and we appreciate it. Um, many of our public schools feel like we're entering a new era with this Board of Commissioners. That's, I keep hearing from people like, this is a, this is a change, this is a different feeling. Um, so I really hope that you'll vote to approve the budget, re budget recommendation put forth for ABSS by Mr. Haygood and I appreciate your support and your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on the back row? Anybody else on the row next to the back row? <laughs> Anyone else on this side? Is it like anybody else in the other courtroom? Is there anyone the in the next room? I'm sure. Mr. I like you. Oh. I changed my mind. I like you. All right. Let's, let's wait until. If you would give, you have five minutes, mm -hmm. and if you'll give us your name and address. Sounds good. Hello, Commissioners. My name is Kristen Powers. She, her, her pronouns. I live in Swepsonville, Saxbaha Road. I'm the Executive Director of Benevolence Farm, an organization off Thompson Mill Road that works alongside women affected by the criminal legal system. We have housing and employment program for formerly incarcerated women on a 13-acre farm and provi provide direct support to women in the detention center and or on probation or parole. I come to you this public hearing as a representative of my organization because I believe we need more investment in both human services and transportation infrastructure. It's not an individual or organizational level challenge, it's a county-wide problem. And to put it into story, one woman told me as we were supporting her from the jail, the judge today gave me supervised probation, and as he told me, I'm saving your life. But are you? Because I don't have a house, so where am I supposed to register for probation? Are you going to give me a home? I don't have a car, so how am I supposed to report to check-ins? Are you going to give me a car? I don't have a phone, so how is the probation officer going to call me? Are you going to give me a phone? How is giving me supervised probation saving my life? I need treatment, not probation or jail. Especially after the last year, her statement's indicative of many of the challenges we see women facing in their re-entry here in Alamance County. For example, supporting one woman of our many at Benevolence Farm for, who's in recovery, which is frequent considering two-thirds of formerly incarcerated people have experienced substance use or alcoholism at some point in their lives. 
If they want to attend NA or celebrate recovery, we personally drive them or find a volunteer. We can't get Lyfts or Ubers because our farm does not receive them in our area. Taxis get expensive fast. We also cannot schedule rides with transportation services because they don't have the funds to operate beyond the work day when many NA and Celebrate Recovery meetings are in evenings or on weekends and our women work during the day. If a resident needs detox or in-person treatment, we're dependent on the fact that there are a limited number of beds for women in Alamance County. For long-term treatment, as far as I can tell, there are only six. Staff from the detention center here have called me too, indicated trouble finding support for women in recovery as they cannot refer to facilities outside of our county like benevolence can. Existing in a rural space like our county is, it's nearly impossible to re receive support when you don't have an income, a support network, or transportation. The woman whose story I mentioned, she got to court by leaving her, the porch she was staying on at 4 a.m. in the morning, walking down Highway 87 from Snow Camp to get to court on time. It took her five hours. She's no job, no home, no car, no phone, and I don't know how you get one or the other without all those in place. As for housing, it's been nearly impossible to find affordable options. We've been supporting one man with only one criminal conviction in 2009. He's disabled, has $800 a month from disability. We fundraise for his rent to cover six months to a year, but he has not been accepted anywhere in this county because of that record. And I don't know how to help him anymore. Many of our residents also struggle to find housing as they transition off the farm. And I get very nervous when their two year stay comes to an end because they don't have the money saved or if our partner or landlords don't have space or somewhere doesn't accept them from a crim criminal record, I don't know what to tell them. In most places, it's more than half their income, which is way more than what our financial literacy classes recommend. And all these stories are not to blame or indict any one organization because we struggle at it with Benevolence Farm. We can only provide housing to six women at a time. And while we do hope to double our capacity in the next few years, our estimates is that will take half a million dollars to just add the rooms for six more people. In 2019 alone, in Alamance County, there were 900 women serving probation supervision, and there's no way we have the funding to even touch 10% of them. And right now, I have to tell every woman who calls asking for help, including the two women who wrote me in the post office I got their letters, I have to tell them they're on a waiting list. And yet we know when Benevolence Farm can invest fully in a woman, we see a 5% re return of, to prison rate compared to the statewide average of 40%. And I'm confident that many of their organizations in Alamance, nonprofit service providers, county departments could demonstrate the same level of success if we had the infrastructure. I feel like we are under-resourced under -resourced and underfunded a lot of ways here, particularly for resources that are trauma-informed and based on harm reduction practices. It's a financial problem, a public safety problem, and a community problem. Mm. We're at a point in this county where I, somebody who knows a lot about local resources, feels like I'm running out of options as to where to send people for assistance. And that's why I'm asking you, the Board of Commissioners, to consider and explore an increase in investment of human services, such as transportation options, options substance use recovery, and mental health care in this year's budget. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. And good, good to see you. I didn't think it good to see all <laughs> of you. I didn't intend to speak, but I think it's the time is right. And give us your name. Frank Bell, 1411 Boone Road, Burlington. That's in Western, in the Western District School. Uh, I've had the opportunity over the 82 years that I've been able to live to serve in a lot of venues. I've sat not on a board of commissioners, but I've worked on budgets and for forecasts for large corporations in my lifetime. A lot of people that are making requests don't know anything about budgeting. They don't understand the process. Therefore, I want to say to you guys we elected you in November, except for Steve, he was already here, <laughs> to represent us. And to sit down, there's more to budget sessions than just sitting down and making discussions and voting on this. You five guys and this guy here and this guy over here 
knows the needs of this county. You know where we can operate and where we can't operate. What the recommendation is to cover all bases. It's important. I'm going to say to you this, thank you for your service. You're capable, every one of you are capable of making the right decisions at the right time. It may not be what I want, and it may be not be what all these people want, but you got the inside. I can't tell you because I'm an outsider. You know the needs and the revenue of this county. I trust you to make the right decisions. Whatever your decisions are, I will support you. Thank you for your service. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. You. Bell. By the way, enjoyed lunch the other night. That was. <laughs> you missed it. I was eating down at the beach. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we enjoyed having all of it. I'm sorry I missed it though. I was I didn't want to be there. We got to work. <laughs> Did I see it? No one else. <clears throat> I should call some folks. <laughs> we'll yeah, wait. Totally we'll wait. Go ahead. All right, we're gonna uh, <laughs> allow commissioners to make comments at this point. I'd like to start out with uh, Kristen Powers. To let her know that ACTA is a um, organization here in Alamance County. It does provide transportation for those that, um, even those that are handicapped or in wheelchairs and so forth. So I would encourage her to seek that out uh, for those that are walking five hours to go to court because that's exactly what ACTA does not have a route like Link, and it's there for that purpose. So, Ms. Powers, I would really encourage you to. Uh, utilize that county uh, benefit. Um, also, and Steve, you, I may be stealing your part of your well, thing. I was going to say the same thing. Um, I just happen to be serving on that board, and I would encourage Christian Powers to get in touch with the, me or somebody else on their board or contact ACTA, ACTA directly and try and see if she can't make some arrangements for uh, mm -hmm. transportation for the young ladies that are dealing with transportation problems. And additionally, Steve and I will say together because uh, Dr. Benson, I think, called both of us, indicated that uh, he felt like the budget was in order and he um, was supporting the budget, Mr. Haygood, as you propose. I uh, do note that it's a 10.1% over last year right. uh, increase. <clears throat> um, don't know what this board will do, but, uh, but it's looking good for education as far as I can tell. And the proposed bill, the, the proposal is for more than is requested. So mm -hmm. that's correct. If you didn't catch that, I kind of got the impression at first that you thought you weren't getting what was asked for, but the proposal is more than requested. So, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, you yes, might want to close the public hearing before you have your discussion. Yes, sir. Thank you. Do we have a motion to close the Do hearing? Do we have any more people that want to have a comment? Well, uh, I'm we, talking about the us man. five. Oh. Like us five, you and Steve kind of talk. Do you? Do we just shut up or we wait? Because it's like it says comments for us, and I didn't know if we were allowed to say anything real quick. We are, but we need to close the. As Mr. Albright has indicated, we need to close the open the public hearing portion. That's correct. Okay. Do that. Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. Is there a second. second? Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Thompson, you have the floor. Okay, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, I just want to thank everybody here for coming before us. Um, this is our first go round. Steve's he's been here before, but um, I, I've been on the other side when it comes to education, and I'm a strong advocate for education. Um, I know I was at the DSS board meeting last week, and they were talking about uh, when I was on the board of education. I was one of those. We always called a COVID denier that really wanted our kids back in school as absolutely soon as possible because working with abuse, I knew a lot of children were locked in very unsafe homes and isolated along with women, domestic violence, all kind of stuff like that. Um, and April's stats compared last year compared to this April stats have tripled. 
So there has been some really hard situations and I'm just so glad school is open because that's a real source for kids to really let somebody know that they may not be in a good place because teachers and school staff is their eyes and ears for young people and I'm just so thankful for them. Uh, my daughter's a teacher and when she first went remote, um, <laughs> Every day I got that call to mom on the ride home. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? It was very difficult and I wouldn't even understand or come close to understanding because I was not in her shoes. But she was telling me how she was on her laptop in kids <laughs> third grade. Her cat walked across the laptop and I mean could have just took the whole class out with one push of a button and she was getting the cat and she looked up and there was no children in the boxes. They all went and got their pet or their stuffed animal look I mean and I right there she said she knew she was going to be okay because she was connecting with them and that's so important because um remote learning is awesome and it's been a blessing but it's it's a lot of distance between the teacher and the student because you can't put your arm around somebody and that's what a teacher's known for and I'm just so thankful that we're getting back to that and um but and I was at Cummins the year before I got off and when we were painting the school Todd the work and one of the teachers took me and Patsy in a bathroom at Cummins and said, oh my God, look, we got light bulbs. Light bulbs. I don't get quite that excited at my house over light bulbs. So that's a big statement about what sometimes teachers have to just accept as their normal. And I just want to thank Kristen Powers for being here because our law office has called several times when we've got clients that are going to be coming home. And what is home? Because usually there's a, a break in the family you know it's just so many dynamics when it comes to stuff like that with bad choices and I just don't start from the court date but um, I, I, I'm a big proponent working with drug addiction that we've got to do something when it comes to people that find themselves in this position you don't wake up one day and says you know I think in a couple of months I'm going to be addicted to heroin I would just do anything I would rather have heroin than baby formula for my child I've been in that case with a client and so it's very serious and we just can't say just get over it it's not like that it owns you and we have to really think that and understand that because jail doesn't fix that it's just a timeout and it and you can talk to our sheriff our police chiefs they'll tell you the very same thing so i hope when i took a, a financial course at our church one time the first thing that come out of this guy's mouth is says look at your checkbook and that tells you your priorities and he was really talking about ties but it also talks about your spending habits so um, that's, a, that's a really good thing for us to say. So I just hope that this is going to be the year that we all support each other and come together in a very tough world right now because everybody in this county means so much to all of us. We didn't run just for one person. We ran for all of you. And I just want us to really think about everybody and every type of walk of life and every mindset and the needs that they have. And this money, this COVID money, I refer to that as the COVID ferry, I hope what we can't put in that budget, we can put in there. Because um, mental health, this has been a mental health festival for the last year, and we have got to take care of each other. Um, because you don't know whose shoes you're gonna be walking in one day. Because I promise you, if, if you think about, we all know somebody with cancer. We probably all know somebody that has abuse in their family. And I guarantee we all know somebody has a drug or an alcohol problem because this is a really tough world to beat us up constantly. So I just hope that we will all think about this as we're working together to make sure we put each other first for, for really strong county because I'm so proud of this county. We, we really, I always say we're smoking hot and I really mean that because I'm very proud of this county. We're way ahead of a lot of people, but we've got to stay there and keep going. You never peak, you never peak. So I just encourage us all to really be patient and be thankful and just be just be thankful. We're all over that curve when it comes to that nasty disease. Now, if our politicians up north can just get their act together, I'd really appreciate it. Mr. Lashley? Uh, I'm just going to be very, very quick. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. And I want to thank all the speakers for um, coming out and letting us hear what, what you have to say. It's really important with our democracy the way it is that's what we all should be doing and I was a little disappointed to be honest with you that we didn't have more folks tonight uh, but that being said is we'll thank everyone for coming out and I promise you uh, the citizens of Alamance County I promise that we're gonna take a look at this budget and work real hard to uh, make this budget look like Alamance County citizens want it to look like and I just want to thank everyone for coming out tonight thanks Mr. Turner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to focus my comment. Well, first of all, I'd like to echo Mr. Lashley's comments and thank all the speakers. 
who came out and the and the way that you presented your your comments and I mean I think we're engaging in civil discourse which regardless of how you feel about an issue it's good that we can come together as a community and have a, a, a legitimate good discussion about how folks feel about how you spend your money because that's what that's what this is about it's what this country is about I want to focus my comments on education um, I'm probably the only I think I'm the only board member who has kids in public schools I've got three kids all in public schools both elementary middle school and high school um, and I don't have to tell y'all it's been it's been a really hard 15 months I mean you guys commented on that um, I think a lot of folks teachers parents principals are, are happy to put the year behind us and it, it kind of brings up this idea about uh, ma'am you mentioned about hope that there's hope for for the future with ABSS I think that's true um, I think that's true with respect to the, the bond money that we're spending we broke ground on a new high school last week um, there is what I think is a, is a reasonable request from from ABSS um, and I think it, it's we've asked the um, superintendent and the the board the school board to to have a plan to operate on a plan we've talked the two boards have, have communicated and we and with the county manager have developed an idea a plan that's workable that's that each board can sort of count on in terms of potential increases year to year and I think the school board is operating on that and I, I applaud that um, so that's one reason I, I, I like the uh, I think we ought to fund the at least the ABS portion the ABSS portion fully um, the second mr. Uh, mr. Rogers mentioned the commitment to educators and the way I understand it the uh, a substantial portion of the requested increase is so that we can give supplements to teachers who are outside of ABSS so that when they come into ABSS we can pay them the supplement if they met the criteria which we can't do under the current policy and that what that actually does is encourage highly skilled educated I mean um, experienced educators to come into Alamance County and I think that's a benefit to our students um, and I think it's important also because of the message that it sends and it goes back to hope that I think it's it makes sense to be able to say that County Commission has fully funded ABSS's request. I'd like to go home and tell my kids that. I'd like to tell their teachers that. I'd like to tell their principals that. Um, and so I think when we look at what this county can contribute to the education of our kids, it just feels good to say, we've given you what, what your educators have asked for. And so I think whatever we do, that should be a priority for the board. Vice Chair Carter. Well, you only left out one segment of the education process, grandparents. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't take any credit for that. There's a grandmother sitting in the front row who spent a lot of time with her grandson while he was remote learning. And uh, so I can tell you from observation, from the observation perspective, that it took a lot of time and a lot of effort. And uh, I definitely appreciate what was being done. Um, and we, and, and having had an opportunity to watch teachers going through the process of trying to communicate and losing their systems or having to deal with their own children who were at home, or cat. Um, I know it was not a simple process. So I think what you have in here is a board that totally appreciates the need for a quality education for our citizens. And, uh, I'm not trying to take anything away from previous boards. Uh, previous board members have had a lot of passion for education, but we are doing, our county is doing much better financially than it's done in a long time. Um, the, the growth in the county, in particular the growth in retail in the county has helped us out a lot. Uh, I think one of the biggest benefits we have right now is so many of our local citizens are buying online, which means we're getting, instead of going to Guilford or Orange or Durham or Raleigh or whatever whatever to shop, they're shopping online. So we're picking up a larger chunk 
of sales tax revenue from online sales than we were in the past, which is helping out our budget. Um, now the job is for us to get our people back on par. I mean, we, as, as I, I hope most of you have been able to hear, we've had a sheriff's office where in spite of the fact that I don't want to even get into what was in the paper this week, but anyway, um, very fortunate to pick up a couple of really good officers from Burlington PD, and uh, that was their loss, our gain. But our sheriff's department has been at a disadvantage in trying to maintain staff because on average, they've been about 12% below the, the relative agencies around us. And I think it's good that most of our citizens now know that and they understand that. I've had comments made to me that they appreciate the fact that we're trying to do the job of getting our law enforcement personnel in the county up to par. And, uh, you know, we, we've got teachers now in a position where we're, I think, number 10 in the state as far as supplement is concerned, which for the size of Alamance County is not too shabby. Um, it's, a, it's a process. And one of the things that I took on personally that I wanted to see us ha have happen and worked with Mr. Haygood on uh, and uh, our finance team was trying to look forward at our budget. Traditionally, we've pretty much done budget on a year-to-year -year basis. This year, we've got a three-year forward look on the budget. I'd like to see us get that out in five years. That way, we can kind of anticipate some of what's going on. Um, we've got growth coming to Alamance County. Uh, since we've been here 20, almost 20 years ago now, Alamance County's added almost 30,000 citizens. And right now, between now and 2035, which is 14 years, we're projected to grow another 30,000 citizens. And just simple basic math leads me to believe that that may mean another 5,000 students in our school system. Um, but that also means all the ancillary issues that you have to deal with, law enforcement, drugs, treatment, and so forth. So, as commissioners, we have a responsibility to try and solve not just this problem or that problem, but to try and find resources to solve all these problems. And it's, it's not easy. And we really value the quality of our team, our staff, to be able to look at these numbers. And if you, I, I give you an I, I think several of you were in here when I picked this up. Now, personally, I've told the other commissioners, I'd like to see the Cliff Notes version of this book. This is the ARPA guidelines that tells us what we can spend this 30 some odd million dollars that Alamance County is going to get. Now, that's, that's going to take a day or two to read, folks. <laughs> um, and I'm not a speed reader, so uh, it may take me even more than a day or two. But we've got folks reading it for us too, getting us getting us into it and find out what's going on. Um, I appreciate all of you coming out tonight. Uh, as, as as Mr. Lashley said, I would have liked to have seen more people make a comment. Um, but our intent the intent is to try and find ways to spend this money to help our citizens, and at the same time try and find some relief for our citizens that are paying the taxes. We had to go up. At some point, we'd like to see it come back down a little bit, too. It's got to be a balancing act. We've got to take care of all these needs. And we just thank you all for coming out tonight. Thank you for the time to speak. As the other four commissioners have already said, I also would like to thank everyone, both those in person and those that are on video, for listening, for paying attention, and for your comments. I really appreciate it. Um, the ARPA notebook that he's talking about, I picked mine up last Friday and it's already being amended. Yeah. So that gives you just some idea of what we're going through. Um, you know, we're getting guidelines from the state and the federal government um, almost on a daily basis, and it's a moving target. <laughs> and so that's, uh, that's not make our jobs easy. Um, how many years did you teach? Uh, about 24, so, but I was eight years at Hall River. 
So 24 years of teaching with Mr. Carter's wife. My wife taught for 42 years. Uh, believe me, we believe in education. I put four children through the Alamance Burlington school system uh, and they all have at the minimum a master's or MBA at this point and two have doctorates as a result of the Alamance Burlington school system. Um, I understand your concerns both from the teacher end of the, the barrel as the old saying goes and also from the students as Mr. Carter indicated. Um, I have two grandchildren that are now living here back in Alamance County and I saw what happened last year on a day-to-day -day basis with the uh, at-home teaching. And my wife and my daughter spent many, many hours, to be honest, that they just simply didn't have, mm -hmm. pulling those students through. Um, you know, we, we have a catch-up that's got to happen with all of our kids because the scoring, uh, the end of uh, school year scoring and so forth, um, does not look, it's not a pretty scene. But thank goodness you are opening up, uh, at this point, schooling not only to those that may or may not have had trouble, but to everyone that wants to go, and I thank you for that as well. Uh, Mr. Carter and I again did talk to Dr. Benson. He seems to be happy with the budget, and I hope you folks are. Um, there are five people here that will have a vote soon. It may or may not be today. My guess would be that we want to consider all of your input and we probably will not have a vote today. Our next meeting is the 21st and that's when we would have a, a, a vote if we do not have one today. Um, we have a lot of assets in Alamance County. Um, as we just mentioned with one of the speakers, Ms. Powers, uh, a lot of the assets are, are simply being overlooked. And we would encourage all citizens to pay closer attention to this county. Um, the cities, municipalities have, um, have input and they have resources. We as a county have a lot of resources. Uh, this past weekend is a wonderful example. Uh, Cedar Rock Park had two, two, content, two sec, separate days, Saturday and Sunday, of World War II reenactments. Uh, I took my two grandchildren and my oldest daughter and my wife out there on Saturday, and we spent a good portion of Saturday out there watching firing de demonstrations. Uh, they camped out there. They were more than willing to talk to anyone, and they had representatives that were uh, reenacting the Germans and the Allies, particularly the United States um, Army, particularly. Uh, how many folks, just to show, how many folks in the audience even knew that happened this past weekend? Um, that's almost embarrassing. Yet you know, we, it was not almost, it is embarrassing. You know, we need to get the word out that Alamance County has a lot going on. Three weeks or four weeks ago, we had the Alamance Battleground mm -hmm. uh, 150th anniversary. Okay, educators, Lexington and Concord, you were told were the first battles in the Revolutionary War. Is that correct? I grew up in Alamance County. No. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the point being, an Alamance County teacher is pointing out to us that we had the first and second battles in the Revolutionary War. Not those guys up north somewhere, <laughs> so Southerners who right here in Alamance County at the Alamance County Battleground site had the first battle in the Revolutionary War. And many folks were killed and or injured on both sides. Now talking about the war that was brother against brother, you know, the Revolutionary War truly was that. Um, but the point being again, how many went to that ceremony? Mr. Hago, do you raise your hand? Because <laughs> you got to hold the gun. Okay. <laughs> Again, almost embarrassing that we as citizens did not know. So, uh, Mr. Hago, uh, I've already asked that the budget slightly be increased for recreation and parks, and you've included that in the 
in the budget. Uh, we're going to try to let you as citizens know more about the many, many, many facilities that we have here in Alamance County. I would ask Dr. Benson and all you educators to help educate our children and send boats home or whatever to the parents about Alamance County and the many, many things that we have, kayaking and canoeing and uh, wonderful parks like, for example, Cedar Rock. Uh, but help us, the county, educate our children and so forth. So I would just really ask that you do that. Um, I've said way too much. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> Mr. Hagan, you've heard from the commissioners, you've heard from the public. Do you have additional comments that you would like to make? No, I, I would uh, echo what the board has said. Appreciate uh, citizens making the time to come out this evening. It's a very important part of this process. And uh, just I would encourage all the citizens listening or watching by video, the recommended budget, all the documentation is available on the county's website. It's part of the packet that was sent to commissioners, so it's posted online. Uh, as well as on the uh, county's uh, homepage. There's a link from the homepage. So uh, if you're at home and uh, you want to take a look at this information, it's out there for everyone to see. And I encourage citizens to take the time to look it up. Thank you. Thank you. I want to make one last comment. Um, we do have a school board member. We really appreciate your being here. Um, I know some of the staff members that you folks have uh, that are not superintendents, they're not um, you know, department heads and so forth um, that don't get the supplements and they haven't had raises as I understand it in a number of years so I would just request and I know there are other school board members that are listening in I would ask that each and every one of you look at some of those salaries that have been frozen for a number of years for some of your personnel that work underneath the directors and some of the others that aren't on the increased salary so that would just be a request that you look at it Okay. Ms. Connell, the planning department, I think you're next. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can have well, not that time. <laughs> so tonight, y'all have on your agenda, there are two planning board positions open right now. You have before you two appointments that planning board voted on at their April, let's see here, sorry, May 13th meeting. Yeah, before you, they recommended Mr. Philip Cobb and Miss Cindy Ellington Grapes. Uh, you have the list of all the applicants that came before that board, and the planning board made recommendation of those two. Uh, they did invite each one to come, and some came. There were a couple by Zoom, and there were a couple that actually didn't get to attend. But um, after discussing and having them talk to the board members individually at the uh, board meeting, they all got to talk to each one and decided to move forward with the two they're recommending. I would point out that we appointed a, uh, a third member or one member yes. at the previous meeting. So that vacancy has been filled. Right. With these two, if these two get filled tonight, that will actually fill the planning board for, they've got a lot of work coming before them even this month. So they have a need to fill these two seats. I'd like to make a comment too. I, I have to say, I re reading over all these applications, we have a really good depth of interest and service in this community with a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, a lot of training. Um, I would encourage anybody who doesn't make it, didn't make it to the, the point of being recommended tonight or, or getting approved, to please don't feel uh, like we don't care. We do care. We do, we do value the, the kind of experience and knowledge that are, that's coming to the Well, we do hold course. applications for two years. Uh, each year at the end of the year, we, some type of seat comes up, whether it's a reappointment or I do have at least one person whose terms are expiring this year. So it, their applications will be with us and will come before you all. We call each time to be sure that they want to be considered. 
and I am a non-voting of your board, uh, did attend the meeting and heard from each and every applicant, and I was very, very, very pleased at how qualified pretty much everyone was. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, you have a recommendation from your board. Right. Those names are? Philip Cobb and Cindy Ellington Graves. Motion to approve. Second. I got a question. Are you going to uh, make a vote on both applicants? You're going to make a vote. Are you going to vote on both? We can applicants? separate them or we can keep them together. The motion at this point is yeah, together. Like the motion is to approve them together, yes. I think we need to vote on them separately, if that would be okay. Would you amend your motion? I'll amend my motion to uh, approve, uh, vote on the approval separately. Thank you, Steve. Would the second approve that amendment? Yes. Thank you. All right. And which one are we voting on first? Well, the first one on the list is uh, Mr. Cobb. All right. Any other comments at this point? We have a motion and a second. Oh, on this? Well, this is Mr. Cobb, correct? This is correct. Mr. Cobb. Oh, Mr. Cobb alone. Are there any comments? I just said this at the last meeting, not anything to do with Blake Cobb. I've known him since he was in diapers. But I do not support family members being on the same committee at the same time. That is nothing against anybody personal. That is just a principle that I have, and that's it. If this was George Bush and Jenna, I'd say the same thing. I'm just, I just, I just have, I just have a conviction about that, and I, that's it. It's not a person. It's just the principle of that. It's my understanding there was to be a transition involved here. Is that not still correct? Not for this. When y'all did Rodney Cheek and Andrea Cheek, you did. Okay. Uh, Andrew came off and Rodney okay. came on. This is would be serving at the same time. Can't and, you remember when Ray's terms are up, I'll be honest. And while and, and at the same time, like what Steve was saying, elements it's like church. There are better singers watching the choir. I mean I'm telling you, and it's kinda <laughs> like the eighty twenty rule. 20% of the people do 80% of the work, and that's in everything. Um, I just, there's so much talent in this county. I just hope everybody will, will step up and get involved in their county because we don't, we just, we just need all kind of different mindsets. Nobody needs to all think the same because me and Bill could be complete opposites on something, but put that together, there's a lot of really good things you can take out of both ideas. So I just encourage us to really think about that. Become more active in your county. I agree. Other comments? I'll just say that I've talked to both Mr. Cobbs. Um, Mr. Philip Cobbs, a, a younger guy. I think that's that's good for the board to have a little youth on it. Um, he's a general contractor. He knows the county. Grew up here. Uh, by talking, after talking to each of them, I I feel confident that they each have an independent mind and can vote their own conscience, and I don't have a problem with it. Any comment? Oh, I just feel like Miss Thompson. I don't feel uh, comfortable with a mother. Um, a mother, daughter, son, father, I just don't think that's a, a, the proper place to be. I don't, I, and I, I think, like Ms. Thompson said, Ms. Cobb, uh, Mr. Cobb is extremely qualified, no doubt about it, but I just don't like the, the scenario. Nothing else. Mr. Carter, any comments? Uh, uh, I attended the uh, my comment. Uh, I feel like Mr. Cobb is well qualified as are a number of the other applicants. Um, I think you'll do a good job. As uh, Mr. Turner indicated, he knows the county. He knows um, a lot about construction and things that will be required for that board. Um, and I plan to vote to put him on the board. Um, any other comments? All in favor of Mr. Cobb signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? No. Aye. I believe it's three, four, and two against. Mr. Albright, I think that's an approval, is it not? It is. Okay, thank you. I just wanted you to say that. Uh, okay, then the second half of your motion is uh, for Sandy Ellington Graves, yes, is that correct? that's correct. And we have a motion and a second. Yes. yes. All right. Any further comments regarding Ms. Graves? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, again, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to congratulate uh, you for having a full board, by the way. 
Uh, <laughs> and you have two good members. But again, I agree with Mr. Carter. I would really encourage those that were not chosen tonight to continue to stay active. There are other boards in the county that they can apply for positions. Uh, and later, possibly the planning board. That's right. Every year we turn something mm -hmm. so that's a way for effect. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Ms. Evans? I believe that Kathy um, Holland was going to join us through Zoom to present for the elections tonight. All right. But if she's unavailable, I'll be glad to do so. Hello, John. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, everyone. Um, I'm on and uh, reaching to you from the cloud. Um, this is another grant that the county has gotten through uh, the CARES Fund. And um, I'm just hoping that you will approve that for us to be able to get uh, additional uh, items that we need to uh, run the elections. Motion to approve. Second. How much is it? Um, 10,000. Yeah, 10, 10,000. And, uh, and Ms. Holland, uh, there is no county match is my understanding. That's right. That's correct. Not on this. But this isn't, if I'm not uh, mistaken, this is something that we um, get reimbursed for, correct? That's correct. The, uh, Mr. Chairman, the other funds that we have gotten have been funds that we get uh, up front. And this, uh, this grant, the state is asking that we spend the money first and then we get reimbursed. We've already gotten reimbursed for what we've spent so far. Right. Just the way it's supposed and to Ms. be. And Ms. Evans, nothing comes out of the county budget at once we get reimbursed. That is, it costs us nothing. That's correct. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? There being none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Holland. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, Ms. Evans. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, before you tonight, I bring good news that one of our Juvenile Crime Prevention Council provider, program providers in Alamance County, our Roots and Wings program, has received $739 in discretionary funding that they will be able to use to purchase a Lenovo ThinkPad. Um, so I bring that request to you tonight to increase their budget by $739 to allow them to make this purchase. There, This is completely state funds. There are no county dollars required. Do y'all know what Roots and Wings does? No. Okay. Teen Court, um, anything they were like, um, any kind of restitution, community, anything working with kids to get them placed in any kind of community service, they are absolutely the best. Um, Principal Michael Bayless from Ray Street and I went to Person County to see their at-risk school like ours here because they were all in total restorative justice. Amazing. And they were their provider and the work they did, they are they're, we are so blessed to have them here. They are just a cut above. They really are. And what they've had to do, go through to work with kids that have been in the juvenile court system while on remote, while on COVID, while this, to really get them with their hours and stuff like that has been amazing. So they're, they are committed with their heart, not just their $739. Exactly. I bet you've never said a number that cheap in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she meant 1000 <laughs> So is that a motion to approve, Ms. Thompson? I, yeah. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> I'll second that. All right. I do yeah, not have stock in this company. I do not have stock. <laughs> <laughs> and there is no county match, is my understanding. That is correct. So it costs the county zero. That is correct, Chair. All right. Any further discussion? We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Yeah. I do. Right. Yeah, okay. So. Mr. Carter did the second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Again, unanimous. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. And Miss Day, is she on 
Scott. I Sullivan. believe uh, Ms. Sullivan will be Sullivan. presenting, Mr. Chairman. All right. Good evening, Commissioners. Good um, evening. Good evening. So Family Justice Center received a grant from the Alamance Community Foundation in the amount of $2,075. Project funds will be used to add um, interactive equipment in our children's playroom, which our children utilize while victims are receiving services at the Family Justice Center. There is no county match, um, and we hope to spend the funds by July 2021. Any questions or discussion? I just think the Justice Center is awesome. They got an awesome director. Always looking for something to do better for the clients they serve in such a tough time. I know your stats are going up. <laughs> so. Do we have a motion? Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. All right, second. Second. All right. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Again, unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. I now have a motion. Um, now let me go back and find my note. Uh, a previous board passed a motion, and, uh, and uh, Madam Chairman or, or Mr. Albright, if you can help me, I'm not finding my note, uh, which said that anything to do with the budget could not go on the consent agenda. Uh, was that 2009 or 2012? I've forgotten which year. Um, um, uh, we have, uh, uh, Tori had sent that information and she did, to and me, I, I'm and I'm looking to see it. if I see that email. I do not see that email with those minutes, but uh, there were minutes from a September board of, 2009. September of 2009, where the Board of Commissioners voted that, um, at, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, Tori. I think before that point, budget amendments had at times been on the consent agenda. Mm -hmm. The board at the time voted to take them off and only and hear them live uh, as individual items. The reason I'm making this motion is for us to amend this is we have $739 and $2,000, and we're spending 10, 15 minutes to approve it. Why would that, and it cost the county zero dollars. It's just a gain gain, and we're killing ourselves time-wise and otherwise. I think that these small amounts where they cost the county zero should be able to go on the consent agenda. I agree, I don't see any reason not to be able to do that. Mr. Albright, do you have any idea your, about- Your why? budget ordinance is a local law. And you're amending a local law, even if you're changing it by a dollar. That's Wait, why pardon? you're amending a local law. The budget is a ordinance. It's a law approved by the board, a local law that governs spending. So if you amend that, you need a little bit more formality and a little bit more discussion. You don't have to take a lot of time to discuss it, but I think that's why we did it in 2009. Do we need to give a public notice or what would be the proper manner we we'll just put it on the agenda as you've done here uh, uh -huh. in the form of a budget amendment just All to right. let the public know that the ordinance that's been passed is being amended. What's, it, what's the amount? What's the amount? What's the threshold that you're looking for? If it's costing the county zero, uh, I'm not sure you can always pull it off the consent agenda. I mean, any, any commissioner can take it off the consent agenda just by making a motion. So I don't think there should be an amount, but I think we should restrict it to matters that do not require matching funds or county funds. But if it's costing the county zero um, and benefiting us as county residents, then I don't think we should set an amount, would be my suggestion. suggestion. Um, but now, did, did I understand Mr. Albright correctly? You said that it, re it required discussion Yes, I would, I would suggest you let me take a look at this um, rather than the few minutes I've known about it tonight. Uh, but it, the, the whole premise of a budget ordinance is to fix in a local law the amount of money that's going to be spent as outlined in the budget. And you, you, may, you may have a budget amendment where you're having to spend more money rather than get money right. in. Mm -hmm. And that's why we changed it in 2009 to make it a little more formal than just on a consent agenda. That way it keeps every keeps people from sliding things under the radar. 
makes it work. Would you uh, create a proposed? We can certainly look at it. My my staff and I will both of us look at it, and right. we'll get back to you on that. That's the staff. And if you right work, with, work with Mr. Haygood to, and Miss Evans to pull that together, I'd be very appreciative. Sure. Glad to. Okay, I think we've reached the point of public speakers. Um, and I think we have two speakers that are on the general. Um, and Mr. Williams, if you'd like to come forward, you have three minutes, sir. Good evening, my name is Dennis Williams. I 150 Lands End Road, Warhead City, North Carolina. So I've come a long way to <coughs> spend some time with you tonight. Um, I work with Trillium Health Resources. I'm their Southern Regional Director, uh, covering Carteret County over to Columbus County. Uh, first, I wanted to say I appreciate the hospitality that I have received since I came here. First of all, with Vice Chair Carter, but the Sheriff's Office was very open and said, hello, how are you? and as well as the snow camp EMS. And of course, Tori has been great as far as saying this is what you need to do, and this is how you do it. So thanks for the hospitality. Growing up in Sampson County, that's kind of what I expected. It was great to feel that and see that tonight. So what I'm here for tonight is to introduce you to Trillium Health Resources. We are a LME MCO, local management entity, managed care organization, which you know very well being a board member of Cardinal, and we former. cover 26 former, okay. This is the current one. This is the current, okay. <laughs> Got you backwards. I was close though. But uh, we cover 26 counties in the eastern part of North Carolina. Uh, we know that currently there are some changes happening within the makeup of the LME MCOs. And we know that counties have the choice to make as far as who they go with as far as an LME MCO. So that's really why I'm here tonight, is to say to you there is another choice well, it may be out, out east. We still are a very well-known and well-respected LME MCO. Uh, I think uh, Mr. Bell kind of said it the best. You know your citizens. You know what they need, and you know how those needs can be met. What we're really kind of presenting to you tonight is we haven't had this opportunity to engage in a conversation with you about this. We just received word for the division recently that we can go out and have these conversations and, and make you aware of who we are uh, and create opportunities hopefully that we can continue to have this conversation so that we can share with you what services we bring to the table and what we do in the 26 counties that we currently serve. We also know that, as we well do, Medicaid transformation is going wide open right now. So the decisions that you make as far as who that LME MCO will be, will be the tailored plan provider mm -hmm. for your citizens, the, the Medicaid, the, the more higher needs individuals. So your more high needs, substance use, behavioral health, and IDD, or intellectual and developmental disabilities pos, pop, mm, populations, an easy word to say, right? <laughs> but so wh what we really, again, really is wanting to help provide you the opportunity to make a choice. Um, Trillium is a choice. We're based out of Greenville, which is about an hour and a half away. Uh, we do serve up to Northampton County, so it makes it a little closer. We serve Nash County as well. Uh, and Trillium is also, you know, as I said, serving a, a very rural area. Uh, if you look at the 26 counties, Pasquotank, Terrell, those are very, very rural areas. Uh, so, to, I apologize, yes. but we're going to have to stop you okay. uh, because it would be unfair to others. Oh, my, no, my three minutes. Would, oh, my goodness. Sorry. That you hang around after the meeting. Absolutely. Uh, and that was, that was going to be my request is that I have an opportunity to just share some information with you. My apologies for going over time, but thanks for the opportunity. Mr. Chairman, would Thank it be you. improper for me to ask the gentleman one question? Oh, absolutely. Mr. Woods. Yes. Uh, do you guys have the ability to work with providers outside of your current geographical footprint? Yes, sir, we do. Okay. We have statewide providers that we work with. We also have contracts with providers outside that are not within our network. So we have those single case agreements. And 
to provide two questions, Mr. Chair. Yeah. <laughs> I was only the, paid for one. The, um, <laughs> it's corollary to the okay. first sure. question. The um, uh, the providers that are outside of your geographic network or geographic footprint are they still in network with you? They they will they are with the single case agreements. So like they don't have a full 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 contract. Okay. And those are some of the things, the details we can get into and share with whomever, maybe the county manager here, uh, what, what we have in place. Thank you. But yeah, I mean, we, we're no different than any other LMEMCO as far as those contracts are, and we, can, we utilize what services we can, whether it be in another state or another county outside of our catchment area. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, Ms. Allison. In the overflow room. Okay. 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 Well, we'll should continue on. Uh, comments of the county commissioners as to the public speaker. I would just have one comment. Um, Cardinal is merging, as I understand it, um, with VIA. That is correct, Mr. Chairman. I had a little bit of info I was going to cover under the manager's report, but please. We'll, we'll wait until the manager's report then. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? I think we're there. <laughs> Your report. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Um, as I'm sure the commissioners know, uh, we've learned that Cardinal Innovations, our current LME MCO provider, is uh, the plan is for them to merge with VIA and uh, for VIA to take the lead is our understanding. So the new organization, VIA, will be the lead organization. It's not exactly clear what will happen to Cardinal, but it sounds like it's going to be a VIA organization. Um, the plan, that, uh, as we understand it, is that that consolidation will take place by uh, June 30th of 2022. Uh, I'm not terribly familiar with VIA. We uh, have learned that they serve 22 western North Carolina counties, so their their geographic footprint is primarily in the western part of the state, Buncombe County, some of those uh, counties in the west. Uh, we, uh, we've been working with the Association of County Commissioners uh, on this issue, and they hosted a call end of last week. Secretary Cohen, and some of the leadership from the uh, uh, NCDHHS, and the secretary uh, was quick to say that the beneficiaries of service, they will continue to receive services. So the folks that are receiving mental health substance abuse services from Cardinal as this uh, consolidation or whatever the county chooses to do, whatever route the county chooses to do, the folks that are getting service, the state is going to ensure that they continue to get those services. Um, and we had a number of counties in the Cardinal catchment area. There were 20 counties originally, uh, a number of them uh, have been given a permission by the state of North Carolina before this uh, before this consolidation to leave Cardinal. So there is a process where if counties are unhappy or for whatever reason they want to leave their LME MCO, they can go through the state to do that. There were a number of counties in Cardinal's catchment area that had either gone through that already and give, gotten a blessing from the state to leave Cardinal or were in the process. And Charlotte Mecklenburg did too, didn't they? Yes. Uh, the, the list that I have, and it's a little unclear to me which of these are actually already out of Cardinal or or, or, or in that process, are Mecklenburg County, Forsyth County, Stanley County, Cabarrus County, Union County, Orange County, and Davie County. Uh, so these counties are either already out of Cardinal or on the way out. And the state indicated those counties that have already gotten that approval or in that process will be able to continue to, to leave. But counties, uh, you know, so we've been told Cardinal and VIA will merge. VIA will be the lead. The state has indicated that uh, counties may, re may request disengagement in light of this. So if we were to decide as Alamance County we were not happy or wanted to go to another LME MCO other than VIA, we have that opportunity to do that. There is a process that runs through um, the HHS, but uh, we have been told we have that ability. We don't have to go with VIA. Um, and we can, as Mr. Williams mentioned, we can start having discussions with other LMEs in the state, right? So if there are, I think a number of the uh, 
ones that were Cardinal Counties. We're talking with Partners, which is another uh, another LME in the state. Of course, we have uh, Mr. Williams here from Trillium. So there are some other LME MCOs that we can start talking to. But the state has indicated they would like for us to have these discussions very soon with these other LME MCOs. In fact, Secretary Cohen uh, asked counties to try to be able to say by the end of this month, this is all happening very fast, uh, if, you, if the county wants to stay with Cardinal or if we have found another LME MCO that we would prefer to go with. Uh, the state was again quick to say, they know that's a quick turnaround. This would not be an irrevocable decision, but I think they want some level of commitment from Alamance County and all the other Cardinal counties. Do we want to go with VIA and just stay with them for a year and, and or some time period and reevaluate or go ahead and make a decision to go to somewhere else? Uh, so whatever we tell the state, not irrevocable, but they do want to know. Um, the CEO of VIA, Mr. Brian Ingram, uh, did call me end of last week and left a voicemail. I have not spoke to him, but he also would like an opportunity to talk with uh, the county commissioners or some representation from the board about who they are and what they do. So uh, this has been a little unlooked for. We knew that a lot of counties in the Cardinal area were having issues with Cardinal, but the, the possibility of them consolidating was, was a little bit of a shock. So uh, timetable is very fast. We need to start thinking about if we don't want to stay with a VIA Cardinal consolidation, who might we want to go with and have those uh, conversations very quickly. So it may be, you know, our next meeting is um, June 21st. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be possible to, to go beyond July 1. The state really wants us to have some level of discussions uh, and have some idea of what we want to do by the end of June. I don't know if the commissioners would be interested and selecting maybe two commissioners to be involved in those talks with these or all of them. It doesn't matter. It's, it seems to be moving very quickly, but we really need to try to evaluate what these other LME MCOs are offering, their track records. Um, we've reached out to some of our peers in other counties and already trying to get some feedback. Are you happy with your LME MCO? You know, we, we had some issues with Cardinal, uh, so we know what our issues were. We're interested in hearing um, from Trillium and from any other LME MCO, how would you address our specific issues that we've been having? Uh, so it, anyway, it's, uh, it's, it's a, a big change for um, who will provide or, or at least manage mental health services and substance abuse services uh, in Alamance County. But I was comforted to know that the state has indicated the priority will be that the folks getting service will continue to get the service no matter who is providing it. So. Um, staff is working on this. If commissioners want to be engaged in specific talks with um, representatives from these uh, LME MCOs, you just let me know and I will loop you in. I'll keep the board informed, but if anyone has a specific interest about wanting to talk to someone like Mr. Ingram, uh, I'll, I'll set up conference calls, whatever we need to do. So. Let me indicate, Ms. Tega and I met this past Wednesday uh, and we discussed uh, all kinds of providers, Trillium being one, for example, VIA being another, and, and, um, and several partners and some of the others. Uh, we also discussed that possibly, was it Mecklenburg and maybe one or two other larger counties are talking about going out on their own. That may well require some legislation to do that. Alamance County, um, I was very, very involved in mental health and was on their board and was chairman of their board for, in fact, I was district-wide chairman for uh, the area between Stokes County and Durham County at one point uh, many years ago. So I'm very, very familiar with that process and what's going on. Um, I would like for us to at least have two of the board members, myself being one, um, and either uh, Mr. Turner or Mr. Carter, both of you having been on Cardinal, uh, one of the two of you, or maybe three board members, uh, we don't want to violate any open meeting laws, um, but uh, set up a subcommittee you know, to discuss those issues. I'd also like to discuss this with our state senator and two House members and see what is on the uh, horizon from a state standpoint. Um, Alamance County had if not the leading, certainly one of the leading health, mental health departments uh, in the state of North Carolina uh, you know, before Governor Hunt dissolved or required, got legislation passed to dissolve the local mental health boards. Uh, you know, we were such a uh, positive unit 
that we would go to seminars across the state um, and we would train other counties how to pull, or combination of counties, how to pull things together. Um, you know, we possibly can do that again, but that is a large bite um, and may or may not be expensive. We don't know with the uh, COVID monies and with everything floating around, um, do we have to make a decision? I know the state wants us to, but I think it's somewhat unreasonable to make a decision by May, uh, June 21st. Do we have to make that decision or can we float for a month or two? Uh, we're so early into these talks. I think I think the state understood that one, this is a surprise to counties, uh, that not that these count, other counties were leaving, but that there would be this consolidation and you know some of the uh, area counties are concerned because uh, you know this group's via is far west so there's not a lot of physical connection to the Piedmont uh, I'm sure that via would say you know they will make that connection right if, if the county decided to go with them so um, we actually have another call coming up with Association of County Commissioner uh, leadership uh, this week it's either tomorrow or Wednesday and I may know a little bit more about how flexible is the state going to be uh, because this is a large a, a big decision to make the hope would be, and what I what I think I'm hearing is, if if the county selects Via or Trillium or any other one to go with for an interim period, um, you know, we would have the opportunity to use the process if we were dissatisfied with the LME MCO that we picked to, to ask the state to let us out of that arrangement too. But I'll try to get a further uh, further clarification about how solid does this is have to be at the end of the month. Right now, what we're hearing is they'd like to know: Do you want to stay in this? Cardinal Via, or are you going to look for other folks? So we just know so little about Via. It's not much I can tell the commissioners uh, uh, about how they do business. Well, I just want to say how important this is because um, we work with Michael Covington, <coughs> who to me in mental health is Elvis Presley. I'm going to tell you, he is amazing. Um, psyche vows uh, with Steve Ginter because not everybody comes in the jail is is really working good and healthy choices in their life there's a lot of trauma whatever that thing is back so i don't i don't know if the community understands the mental health services that are going on in the the detention center because it is a place where a lot of sick people are at just like church it's not always just the perfects and um, i can't say how important this service is to just that population let alone the other with our schools with everything and um, and you have to really make sure if you really want someone to become successful they have a plan the path they have a plan a real safety plan a real life growing plan so um, whoever it is we have I, I we've always had good connection with them but it's just so important that you have those people that can make those decisions because in a situation where there's a commitment that you have to drive down to Butner in that situation or whatever you're looking at, it's not three weeks later. It is right now. And whoever that company is has to move. And we've had some really good, we've had good results with that. But um, it just depends on the company. But it depends on that person that's over there doing that work. So um, I, it's, it's, it's crucial. It's just crucial in the world we live in today. Well, we have a very, very soon coming up uh Call with the association and I will send uh, an update to the entire board as soon as I'm done with that call so all of you can see what what we were able to learn what's the newest uh, uh, newest information but I have a feeling very soon I'm sure this will involve um, Mr. Albright and, and members of the board because we want to make a good decision about who we choose uh, you know, <laughs> or, or what route we go uh, with mental health service provisions just a quick comment mr. chairman if I may yeah. the I think it is unrealistic for us to make an informed decision in two weeks about that. Um, I can just tell, I'm sure you know, Mr. Hagan, that I haven't been dealing with Cardinal that long. My experience is the service has been pretty good with one exception, which is a significant exception, <coughs> and that is um, determining placement for at-risk foster children in distress. Mm -hmm. yeah determining the type of placement and then finding the placement once the type of placement has been determined. That is a, a significant issue that regardless of what path we take, we've got to get that right. Indeed. Yep. Yes. Because sometimes you have children, there is no place for them because 
of what they have experienced and what they have become specifically because of what's happened to them. People aren't crazy. Crazy happens to them, and we always have to know that. You two gentlemen have been on the Cardinal Board. Which of the two of you would like to sacrifice the time? <laughs> <laughs> time is precious, but I'm happy to, I'm happy to contribute. All right. And then, he would be the logical replacement or a placement for the new board since he's serving on that board, so I'll defer to Mr. Turner. And I thank you. Uh, Mr. Haygood, if you'll put myself and Mr. Turner on that subcommittee. Okay, very well. Just keep us as fully <clears throat> informed as possible. Indeed. Um, also, I wanted to just uh, briefly touch on the ARPA books that you have. Uh, so some commissioners, we were intending to pass these out tonight, and some folks came by and picked them up early, which is great. So if you don't have one, we have one for you this evening, and there is an update. The, the hard copies that we will give you tonight, if you need one tonight, are updated as of uh, the best we know today. And uh, we also have information to put in your books. If you picked one up early, we have the update information we will put in there tonight before you leave. So it just it keeps you updated with what NACO is saying, the Association of County Commissioners say, and School of Government. Um, the, the documentation from the U.S. Uh, Treasury is in here. So we're, we're trying to keep these updated. Um, what I'd like to suggest to the board, and I need to know if this works on your timetable, is uh, we feel like as staff we could be we would be best prepared to do a presentation to the commissioners on July 19th uh, that would go over information about ARPA as best we know. That would include uh, the most recent guidance, go over it with the commissioners so the public can also listen in and hear this. Uh, but our understanding is July 10th is when the interim guidance, when Treasury will decide this is now the final guidance. So uh, counties and different folks are making comments on the interim guidance. So after July 10th, Treasury will adopt the final version. Right? We don't think it's going to differentiate too much from what we have right now, but it may. We'd like to have the final copy of the rules that we go over with you. Um, we'd go over the recent guidance, how we interpret it. We'd also like to go over with you, you know, all this time Mimi uh, has been meeting with county department heads, representatives from the community, a lot of ones you have sent to us, right? If somebody's came to you and said, hey, I'd, I'd like to see is there a way that, you know, my program can, can benefit from this. If they come to me, I've shared them with Mimi. Mimi has reached out to them. We'd like to go over with you at that time some programs or, or possibilities that we think we feel like already qualify, right, based on the guidance. That does not mean you have to do it. That's a board decision, right? But if we know we've got in the hopper some proposals that already we feel confident meet the guidance, then we will share those with you that night too. What is a hopper? It's like a, almost like a bingo, yeah. like when you do bingo, yeah, you know, and they're all in there floating around. And, sorry, you know, you I'm just, sorry. <laughs> I have no clue. In the hopper. Uh, I, so uh, we also we also will on the 19th would be able to report to you. We have some departments like uh, our health department and DSS that are going to receive their own specific allocations that are outside of our 32 million. So we want to be able to report to you what their plan is for that money. We've been talking with uh, Tony and with Adrian about what, what will the plan be, so we'll share that. And then if we know of any, you know, we know that ARPA money is going out in the community, the school system, some other folks, anything else we can pin down that is not county $32 million, we'll try to, we will report that uh, that night also. It was um, very good. I would note that we do not have a meeting on the 5th. That's so correct. So the night, uh, 10th would be the only meeting we'll have in July. Yes, sir. That, that, is, that is correct. And I think the, uh, the final piece that we would want to talk about with the board is we've talked about a committee for the commissioners to form that would help you discuss uh, and decide what these best uses are for this, for this funding. We, we have uh, what we would like to be able to do that evening is share with you some ideas of organizations you may want to have represented on your committee. But then that night, if the board so chooses, to go ahead and, and let's formalize that, that committee process. So that would be on the 19th. We'll have a list of potentials. Uh, potential organizations I, I would we will probably I would imagine suggest you have some at large too so if you want to appoint some specific people we would work with Tory uh, to set that up in a way kind of like some of the other boards it would be a more of an ad hoc just for a couple of years because this money stays in place until I think 24 so that would give you a chance to go ahead that evening set up the committee representatives we're reaching out afterwards saying please assign someone from the Chamber of Commerce, for example, if you believe that's an important group, or, or whoever. Uh, so I think those would be the points we would cover on the 19th. I know that 
that we're being inundated by lots of folks calling saying, hey, we, we think we've got a good idea for a program in the community that's worthy, it's been hit by COVID. If the commissioners think they can uh, uh, hang with us until July 19th, I feel like that would be a good time to present something a little more comprehensive that we feel like the treasury guidance is in place well enough that you could really start moving forward. And in fact, you may hear some of these potential program ideas or have your own, but if the ones we will bring you that evening will be ones that we feel like this meets criteria. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but some of them may be time uh, constraints too. If we know that, we will say, if you want to make a move on this, it, it meets our terms, it's up to you. So, does that, is there a consensus with the board that that sounds like a reasonable plan to come on the 19th with this, this info? Then the sure. August 2nd and 16th are the two meetings in August. So yes. we would have time in August. Uh, and I assume there are no really tight guidelines or time restrictions. Is that correct? I think the funding has to be, the funding has to be encumbered uh, in 2024, I think by the end of 2024, yeah, if I remember correctly, then you have until perhaps 26, I believe, to actually spend the money. So you can have it encumbered. You have to be able to show Treasury, we've got this much booked up, ready to, ready to spend, but then it has to actually be spent by then or you have to give it back. So. I think if you, if on the 19th you you agree amongst the board for the the, um, the configuration of the committee, you know, then once we know the organizations, we'll get word out to them very quickly. Please assign someone to this committee. If you do at large, which you may want to do, just to have uh, you personally appoint one person each, or however you would like to solicit applications, we'll set that up immediately too. Our goal would be in August we have the committee uh, ready for you to bless as a membership. Brian Haygood from. Uh, impact elements. This person from at large as appointed. Either you do your own appointment. You could say, "I, Pam Thompson, want to appoint Brian Haygood," or we open it up and six at large, and you get a group that comes before you of citizenry that wants to serve. So. Well, we've got money coming in to ACC. We've got about a hundred billion dollars coming into ABSS. We've got about thirty. What is it? Thirty-two, thirty-three coming to us. Yes. Sir. Um, just loaded. <laughs> transportation. Wait till the bill comes. Transportation in the county is supposed to be getting some money, and the municipalities are all getting money. Um, so that we don't all wind up spending money on the <laughs> same things. I know this sounds like it's try I'm trying to make it more convoluted than it already is, but we need to have some representation, I think. From these other bodies in the discussions so that we don't wind up with two two viper towers in the northern part of the county that's Certainly. not going to happen but i mean that could be an example um i mean part of the money can be spent for broadband expansion in the county part of it can be spent for water and sewer school funds money can be spent on uh, um, hvac um, and windows, things of that nature, but there's some of the stuff that can be middle ground that we can figure out exactly among the groups how to pool mon money and get some goals met for the whole community. But this money is to be spent on windows, and that's it. Not that person that owns those windows expects that money every year for the rest of their life, right? Well, this is, I was talking about county Well, I'm just windows. using an example. Like if we're going to replace the windows at turn time, good Lord have mercy, they're not going to, that's not every year. That's no, not well, part of their budget. No. That's a yeah, one-time deal. This has nothing to do with the budget. So we don't have yes. to come back the next year and try and find room in our budget that will cost the county taxpayer that money. No. I think right? that, that would be, as you, as the commissioners, who would be the ultimate approving authority of any of these expenditures, you'll consult with your committee if you you that would be something you as a as a and body yet. would you would want to to consider is the way we're about to spend this money setting up a future need to you you may be willing to do that i don't know you would make that decision right if you say we were willing to see this money for a year knowing somebody else is going to have to pick that up and it could be the county or or the commissioners may say we will not do that we will only spend this money in a way that it's a one-time spend you know we, we don't want to set something up that's going to take additional county dollars afterwards that would be the prerogative of the commissioners of course but i think uh i think this committee would be a good way to flesh that out and i would imagine that anyone that the commissioners determined or um, 
uh, would be beneficial to have on the committee, they will send a representative. So if you wanted ACC, the ABSS, I, I think that is wise because there are many other pots of money besides just ours that there could be good done for our community that might be a, uh, what we're hearing is they're looking for these kind of partnerships. So if a mental health effort you want to take on or some specific mental health project you want to do, that could be one of the cities and the county going in together, perhaps right. after the mental health pot of money maybe, not necessarily just the county's dollars. But that's the board we're setting, or the group we're setting up on July the 19th, is it not? I think you, the, oh, the decision to spend will be the commissioners. It, so the, 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 the fleshing out of possibilities and, and arriving at what you want to do with it, I, I see in my mind, and you may not, and that, but this committee would, be, would help you do that, representing interests from around the community that either have access to the money or know of potential good things to do. But then once it's determined you want to spend X number of dollars on Viper Towers, it comes here right here before you to say we have a recommendation from the ARPA committee to spend X dollars on a Viper Tower. Do the commissioners agree that you know that's what you want to spend it on? So you, it, it would be your authority given to spend the money. How many people are you thinking for this? Not like Jack, not that big. Yes, there, there's a there's a level where it becomes unwieldy, uh, and it could be that you would want to subcommittee that some of it out. That means hard to get along with, right? Yes. Okay. Hard to hard to get something actually okay. done. Yes. Uh, you know, you may wind up thinking about doing some subcommittees if you know mental health is one of the ways we're seeing that this money can be spent. You know, the the, the treasury is saying lots of people suffer from in a mental health capacity during COVID, so it may be you set up a subcommittee of people specifically thinking about mental health you may want to say out of our 32 million we feel comfortable <laughs> roughly earmarking this amount tell us how it would best be spent in our community to spend x number of dollars on mental health services uh you know you don't want to you hate to leave people out who have that expertise but you also don't want a committee that's so huge you, you, you struggle getting anything actually done well i agree miss thompson uh it, jack is a great committee and a wonderful get together for a Christmas party. Well, I'm okay, there quite that bad, <laughs> but it's just so large that it just—it's um, really hard to work. Uh, but I would assume that on the 19th we'll bring in some that maybe somebody from Burlington, someone from Graham, whatever, and have input from the different municipalities that are receiving money from the school board, from ACC, um, and all the players. But just have one member. Um, and keep it as low as possible. Yes. Um, yes. And we'll look for your input. Well, the, I want to stress that, that the commissioners will make these determinations, but we will bring you possibilities and try to try to keep it, um, um, you know, efficient, right? But but you know, we'll bring you a list of people that we think we have heard this this these folks might be valuable from this organization to have on the committee for the board to work with. Uh, and, and have that to you on the 19th. Again, go over, go over some of this guidance and, uh, and, and help get a committee formed so the board can start talking with the community about how to spend this money. We've received our first tranche, I think, of 16 million. So we already have that money now. Uh, it has been invested, I believe. Uh, Susan has, uh, has worked to have it invested. So we're holding it. It's ready to be spent once the board finds uh, what you value to spend it on, and that is uh, uh, compliant with uh, Treasury guidance. And we'll have that information by, you think, July 10? The 10th is the date that, uh, from my understanding, the Treasury finalizes their guidance. The, right. it, it's interim plan right now. Again, I, I don't think it will change dramatically, but uh, you know, it, it seems like it would be best to wait for them to give us the final set of their rules that they have blessed. I just would like to make a suggestion. Whoever these folks are, I don't, I hope, I just don't want them to be the same people that we always see because that's nothing wrong with that either. But I would love to really go way down into that agency or that whatever that really is on the front lines so they can give us a first hand view of why they need, because why is the hugest question in everything that we try to do. And that's not against any director, or any president, any whatever. Um, I just, you know, 80-20, just saying. So noted.
Mr. Chairman, if I may. I'd, I'd like yes, to piggyback on Ms. Thompson's comment in a roundabout way, but I'm going to get there. Do it in a more professional way. Well, no, no, you're being Go ahead, um, Hopper. So I've, I've been, <laughs> I, I have been through um, most of the guidance. Um, it, it really it functions like a grant. It functions like mm -hmm. a massive grant for every municipality in the county and, and, and other organizations as well. So I do think it's important that we get organizations on that committee, I think that committee is vital, that we get organizations on the committee that are used to dealing with grants, mm -hmm. like Impact Alamance, like um, United Way, like Cone. I mean, so I think getting that kind of expertise is vital. I think there ought to be one or two commissioners on it. I think there, um, it, we ought to, and this goes to Ms. Thompson's comment about going deeper, um, I think the, the organizations can, can identify who they want, but I think that committee ought to be empowered to reach out to the members of the community to have meetings among individuals in the community. That this is designed to impact those in, in local communities who have been impacted the most by COVID. Health care workers and, um, and citizens, security, broadband access like Steve talked about. Um, and the way that you get unique ideas, the way that you know how best to impact people is to talk to them. Talk to everybody who wants to be heard. Uh, so I think that committee and through us ought to be empowered to, in some way, we ought to think about that in a way to have those kind of conversations. Sure. Um, and I think a well thought out plan uh, is the way to do this so that we're spending this money wisely and that we're investing in the future uh, and, and that we ought to have deadlines. I think that's a way to get around this, just too many people. We have, we have deadlines with, a, with a, you know, a, a plan to spit out by a certain date. Um, and that we empower the committee to do that. The thing that I will say that is completely contradictory to that is that, as I understand the guidance, Brian, there's nothing that would prohibit the board from making a decision, a decision tonight about allocating some of this money. Is that That's right? That's right, yeah. So as we're thinking about the budget, we can also think about, I mean, there's $32.7 million here. We can think about if, if an organization, if something that, that fits right. within this guidance doesn't meet doesn't meet it in the budget, doesn't get in the budget, there may be an opportunity, or there would be an opportunity, for this board to, in the short term, come up with some small amounts of money, relatively small, I mean, compared to $32.7 million, uh, that, we can, that we can think about some, some of that funding. I will say that it's clear in the guidance that municipalities, counties are not allowed to reduce taxes based on uh, money you get from COVID. We can't, we're not allowed to do that. That doesn't mean we can't reduce taxes. It means you can't use this money to do it. Sure. So that's something that we have to keep in mind too. But I think we can do both of those things at the same time if we plan it correctly. And I think moving in this direction is very wise. So noted. Well said. That, that's exactly what I was trying to that's say. That's what you said. <laughs> I think you spoke well for all of them. I did. You're welcome. <laughs> the only other thing I had, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, I uh, just wanted to give Bruce an opportunity very quickly to speak about uh, broadband. I know that's been a huge topic. I know several of the commissioners have been engaged with uh, already, but how, how, does, how do we work with the state and our private partners to um, enhance broadband offerings in the county? So, Mr. Turner made a good point that it is like a big, giant grant. And one of the key pieces of the grant is like they score on those kinds of things. So like the great grant, we were involved with the great grant the last time they came out with stuff. And of course, those are relying on federal maps that I would argue, truth on the ground, aren't too correct. I've argued that for a little bit of a while. I come from the mapping background. The state, for we did our own survey for a while. We had less than 1% of the folks respond to it. We sent out all our tax bills about three years ago. I mean, and trying to, trying to, people would call us and say, help, I need help. It's all for COVID and all that kind of stuff and work from home. And uh, we were trying to address and, and do some low-hanging fruit and that involved that. We, see, we know on the ground there are folks that do not have access. There's two different fields. There's people that have access, it's like the highway's outside, but they don't have a car. Those kinds of folks. And there's the folks that don't have a highway, okay? And um, in Alamance County, we definitely know there's some spots. We've had some commissioners that didn't have any. They moved on to the state. Um, the state, in trying to correct those maps, because you can send them all the maps you want, but they have to be federal and state maps to qualify for a lot of these grant-like functions, or at least score higher on some of these uh, grants. So there's a lot of, uh, Mr. Turner's on the Digital Inclusion Plan Group. Um, 
I've sat in on a bunch of meetings and stuff like that the last few weeks, um, and we're working on maps. But the state last year had like a survey, internet survey that would, we had a survey that said, hey, what's your speed? And we said, pick below, and a lot of people don't know what their speed is. Uh, the state took it a step further and says, click here, and we'll, we'll check your speed for you with an internet server where you at, how big your internet is. That doesn't cover the people that don't have internet. <laughs> Okay, the irony wasn't lost on me. So the state has fixed that. They now have a thing where you can text in that you don't have internet at your house and they'll ask for address because they're trying to create address points and correct these maps rather than take census tracts or census blocks and applying data to a large geographic area. So I'm going to show you real quick a couple things. They also can call that number for those folks that even don't want to text. They just want to call a phone number. So one of the things we really need to do, and the state needs us to do, is to be able to allocate these things and qualify areas that we know need it. Um, we need folks to let them know. We can yell and scream all we want, but they have to let them know directly. So we need to promote this survey yet again, and I'll show you real quick some numbers and the survey itself. <clears throat> but I'm gonna do all our power of social media and whatever and getting out, we're working with the school system as well. We're having a meeting on Wednesday about this as part of this subcommittee of this digital inclusion plan. So I'm saying this publicly. We need your help. We need the press's help on this. We need people to click on this and just turn in your address. If you don't have internet access, we need you to tell the state and the federal government you don't have internet access. We know. We hear you. We can't do as much about it until you're tabbed in that map. So let me show you real quick. Um, so NCDIT, this is their actual survey. And if you look statewide, the gray areas are the, are the folks that are around Charlotte and Raleigh, and they have really high speed internet. Big surprise. Red areas and yellow and orange are individual addresses. If we scoot into Alamance County, this is their tool, not mine. Um, they've only had 318 people respond to the survey. Uh, 135 are out, I don't have any internet and then four don't even have cellular. So the red numbers, which we kind of already know, in the southwest, again, we're talking about people without the highway to the internet. We're not talking about um, in the northeast, but this is a very small amount. And so the broadband survey, which is, this is, they've, they've put out a ton of media. We can, they give you uh, media put out on social media. They give you links and all these wonderful things like they did for the vaccine. They gave you all these different kind of resources, the posters are put on the wall. We have all that stuff now from the state. Again, what's really wonderful now is that if you don't have internet, there's a phone number you can text to and just say internet. And that number is 919-750-0553. That's 919-750-0553. And you can call that number and, and answer the questions and give them your address. And that will increase our numbers. If you saw on that map, if I do the whole state, I zoom in, there's a lot less participation in our county than just surrounding counties. And we just need more participation so we have access to those dollars that we need to get to. We're slowly give that number out of campus. Okay, absolutely. So that number, you can text internet to, and we'll put out all this, um, you can just text internet to 919-750-0553, or you can call that number and answer a survey and have an address. So I want to take this opportunity, we're going we're gonna to bounce this out from social media, we're printing out posters and those kinds of things. We really need for, to take advantage of a lot of this ARPA funds. And, money that are going to great grant and other grants that are out there to take advantage to help out with this broadband problem we need folks to tell the government i need your help and this can go on the county's facebook so we in turn can share it yes. absolutely okay thanks. we're going we're to publish the heck out of it okay so we have had their survey on our web page if you need broadband there's a place where you go and, and but we're going to re-establish it again and try to get it out there so any questions just to, just to piggyback on, on that, Mr. Chairman, there, um, there are federal dollars that are going to be allocated to broadband. There are state dollars that are going to be allocated to broadband. We have control over ARPA money that we can choose to dedicate to broadband. Um, 
th this is new. I mean, in the past, yeah, you can do a survey and we can tell people what, it, what we have and what we don't have. Now there's money to fix it. There will be money to fix it. And I can tell you, the first step to getting broadband for the county is knowing where to where we need broadband yeah. for the county. And it's not just have it or don't, it's have it sufficient broadband with sufficient speeds. This is a race between us and every other county that doesn't have sufficient broadband. And this is the first step. If folks will go online and take the survey, we can get we can get all, all of our crap in one sock, maybe term, <laughs> and we can and we can beat the other counties so that so that when the money is allocated, we're first in line. We say this is our map. This is what we need. Let's get it, and we can be we we can get sufficient broadband covered for this county. We can do it. We've got to get this done. Well, Mr. Kerner's right. There are two other sources besides the thirty. Two odd million dollars we're getting state and federal money coming here just for broadband I would challenge the media I mean this is not the kind of hot sexy news that you guys like to have on the front page but it's what your constituents and the people that are paying your subscription rates need to know and if you can help us get this message out that would be beneficial to the citizens of Alamance County did you hear what Steve just said? Hot, sexy. Did you hear that? <laughs> no, we usually hear that on the dais, do we? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's all I have, uh, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, if we adjourn now, we will be right at two hours. Yes. That will be a record for this new board. Do we have a motion? Amen. So moved. <laughs> do we have a second? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The one time the sheriff's not here. Yeah. Like Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 7 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.